Hey there, it's Matt from Connell's Catch Seafood, back with another simple seafood video. Today we're going to dive into oysters. Now oysters can be a bit intimidating, especially for the novice user. But through this video, we're going to show you everything you need to know from buying, to storing, to shucking, to serving your fresh oysters at home. So you can have seafood success. So the first question I get when it comes to oysters is, is how do I buy these things? You know, some people have had them in restaurants and they've enjoyed them when they come already shucked with all the complimentary sauces and things like that. But let's take it back to the root of where the oysters actually come from and how they get to your fishmonger and eventually to your table. So generally the oysters that we like to sell at Coddles are from PEI. Um, so we have a couple favorites, Lucky Limes and Raspberry Point, both from Raspberry Point Oysters out of PEI. They come in fresh to our shop multiple times per week. Uh, they come shipped in these boxes here. So this is a hundred count box. So if you were shipping oysters anywhere, this is the standard ship. You can buy them by the hundred count. Uh, you can also buy them by the 50 count. In these bags here. So that's a 50 count bag right there. Uh, you can also buy them by the piece or by the dozen. So whatever you need, we can accommodate. So in buying your oysters, there's a few key things to look for. Uh, most importantly, you want to make sure that they are closed. So the East Coast oysters should always be closed tightly. This is an indication that they're alive. If they're cracked open even the slightest bit, it's a good chance they're dead and they should just be discarded immediately. A good way to tell if an oyster is good inside is by tapping them together. So if you took two oysters and tap them together, it should make a real solid sound like two rocks hitting each other. If you get any kind of hollow sound out of there, it's a good indication that the oyster's dead on the inside or at best out of juice, which is not uh, desirable in the space. So that's the first thing to look for. Secondly, you get a choice between our choice grade, which is your restaurant quality number one graded oyster, and a standard grade oyster. Uh, and the differences in that are mainly the shape of the oyster. So if we look at a choice grade lucky lime here, it has a nice deep cup that you can see, flat top, and it's nice and round around the top. Very uniform. Uh, every oyster in the box is gonna look just like this. That's your choice grade. This is what the restaurant's like, and this is what you're gonna pay your premium for. If I was serving oysters, I always go choice grade. You do have another option though. So this is a standard grade oyster. Now quality wise and flavor wise, you're gonna get the same result as you would out of a choice grade oyster. It's still gonna be as fresh and as tasty. The only thing is the shape. So, you know, it's a little oddly shaped around the top here. It's flatter. It doesn't have that cup. So that is just less desirable for a restaurant. If you don't mind that at home, uh, then, you know, you can get a really good bang for a buck on a standard grade oyster. Another difference between the standard grade and the choice grade oyster is the ease of shucking. So with a choice grade oyster, you're going to find that in the back hinge here, you're going to have a nice spot for your knife to get in. It's going to be really easy for you. Uh, with the standard grade, that hinge can be bent. It could be more difficult to get in there. Uh, also with the oddly shaped shell, it's prone to cracking when you get your knife in there. So, you know, it's a little more difficult to shuck a standard grade. When you're in store purchasing your oysters, there are a few other things to look out for. Uh, there's going to be different flavor profiles depending on where the oyster comes from. So if an oyster comes from the point of a bay out in the ocean, it's going to have a higher salinity, whereas something from the mouth of a river where fresh water is meeting the salt water, it's going to have lighter notes of salt. Uh, the mineral levels of water is also important, and it all lends into the flavor of the oyster. So once you've decided on what oysters you're going to go for, uh, your fishmonger will likely bag them up in a plastic bag just like this. Um, they'll seal it and they should poke holes in the bag. Just the oysters are alive and they do need air uh, while being transported. You can ask them for crushed ice um, and with the crushed ice and the oysters they can easily be transported for several hours uh, out of refrigeration no problem. Uh, when you do get them home, if you're going to have them that evening, you can just keep them in that plastic bag, throw them in your fridge, and just keep them there till you're ready to prep them. Otherwise, I would recommend taking them out of the plastic just into a nice bowl, nice clean bowl. Just like that. Um, people ask me about putting crushed ice with them or ice cubes. I wouldn't recommend that because the oysters actually feed uh, by taking in water that surrounds them. So if there's melted ice water that's fresh, 
the oyster will ingest the fresh water and then actually kind of dilute the flavor of the oyster. So if you're, if you're seeing your oysters displayed on ice, that might be a red flag. They might not be as flavorful as possible. The best way to store these oysters is dry just like this. Uh, if you're going multiple days, a wet kitchen towel or a wet paper towel is also a good idea. We're just about to shuck our oysters now. I just want to touch on some oyster knife options. There's a lot of stuff out there and it could be confusing for some people. There's something as simple as this blue handled knife or this black handled knife, uh, something intermediate like that, or something as elaborate as something like this with an oyster guard and, and all that. Now, what it boils down to is what you feel most comfortable with. Me personally, I like this blue handled knife here. It's got a strong blade. Um, you know, nice grip, easy to get into that oyster, and uh, it just feels good in my hand, and that's, that's the most important thing. But I, you know, I have colleagues that use the black knife, the green knife, again, it's all about safety and about you feeling comfortable, so whatever you like is best. I'm ready to shuck my oysters. We've got the bowl from the fridge with our oysters in it. We just want to take the time to wash them in some cold water. Uh, that's going to take off any shell chips or any dirt that might be on the oysters. So I'm going to grab one here and show you. Um, all oysters will have that rounded top and come to a point at the bottom. This we call the hinge. So that's where we're going to go in and, and start to shuck our oyster from. Uh, the knife actually fits very well in the hinge there. I like a thin bladed knife like this because it gets in there real good. Now if you're an amateur shucker, you might want to use a kitchen towel like this. Simply put your oyster inside the kitchen towel. Take your knife, put it into the hinge. You're going to put a good amount of pressure on a 45 degree angle and a quick turn. And you're going to pop that oyster open. Once it's open, just a little bit, remove it from your cloth. You can prop it open with your finger. Now you're going to take the blade of your oyster knife and you're going to run it across the top of the shell. There's a little membrane that attaches the shell to the meat. You're going to want to remove that. Then you want to do the same thing on the underside of the shell. Again, keeping that blade on the bottom of the shell. The goal is not to have any torn meat here. Um, it might need just a little touch there to release it and then onto the crushed ice. We've got our oysters shucked and they're on the crushed ice. We're gonna just pair that with some fresh slices of lemon, some hot sauce, some mignonette sauce, and some horseradish and we're good to go. Serve our oysters with, we're gonna make a simple mignonette sauce. Uh, it's really easy to make at home. So all you need is a few ingredients. You need red wine vinegar, chopped shallots, salt, pepper, and lime juice. So you're just gonna take a little bit of your red wine vinegar into a bowl. Chop shallots, you wanna chop them super fine so you can get a little bit of shallot on each oyster. You don't wanna get a big chunk of onion in your oyster. Uh, then just a pinch of black pepper, pinch of salt, and a squeeze of fresh lime juice. I'm gonna combine that all up and you're good to go. Thanks a lot for watching. I'm Matt from Cottle's Catch Seafood. Hopefully you learned something today. Be sure to follow along for more simple seafood videos so you can have seafood success at home.